America was established not to create wealth, but to realize a vision, to realize an ideal, to discover and maintain liberty among men. Join us now with host Dr. Catherine Benny, Julie, Americans who make a difference. Welcome to American Visions. I'm Dr. Catherine Benny, your host for the show with my dog, Julie. Now, this show is designed to give you glimpses into the lives of Americans. So stay with us. We'll show you the sights. We'll have you hear the sounds of America and its people. So let's look at the land and its people. Well, many of you probably have your model trains erected just for the holiday season. Well, tonight we're going to visit and talk about one of the most historic trains and the tracks and trestles on which it ran here in Red Lion. And Red Lion, of course, is the little town in which our station is located. I'm sure many of you will have memories that you can share with us about Taylor's Trestle. Before we get there, though, let's look at our flowers. They're from Flower World, unique and personal flower arrangements for you and yours. And there they have a trestle, a bridge that a rail is crossing over, nestled amongst the flowers, unique and personal. What a great depiction of our theme. That's Flower World, 2925 East Prospect Road. Please go visit them. You won't be disappointed. Now I'd like to introduce our very special guest. Many of you will recognize the name because his grandfather as well as his uncle were lawyers in Red Lion and his dad is Dr. Sam Laux who is a colorectal surgeon in the York area. So without any further ado please welcome Mr. Joseph Laux. Thank you. Oh welcome. Come, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. Um, I am 15 years old and I go to York Catholic uh -huh. and I am involved in Boy Scouts in Red Lion Troop 35. Uh, what grade are you in now? I'm in 10th grade at York Catholic. 10th grade. And tell us why you wanted to come on tonight. Well, I wanted to come on tonight to talk about my trestle project, my Eagle Scout project. Eagle Scout project. And what does this project involve? Well, it involves the old historic railroad trestle, Taylor's trestle in Red Lion, and the preliminary efforts to restore it, to hopefully have it restored and used as part of a rail trail. Well, in what condition is this trestle presently? The trestle is actually in a very big state of disrepair. It has, it's very overgrown and has been vandalized. Oh, goodness. Now, explain to our viewers who are sitting back and thinking, a uh, trestle, that name sounds familiar. Exactly what is a trestle? Well, a trestle is basically a railroad bridge, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are used in the 19th and 20th centuries to surpass, of course, water and mountainous areas. Right. And I guess back in those ages, they didn't have modern construction or even materials. No, they didn't. They actually, um, well, the trestle is believed to be made of Douglas fir wood. Wow. Which was what typically was made, what trestles were made of during the time. And it has, what was I going to say? It has a lot of structure to it because a railroad is quite heavy. Well, yeah, it has many vertical beams, structural beams, which are called uh -huh. bents, uh -huh. which are each placed about 11 to 12 feet apart from each other, so that when a train engine was passing, it would never be on one single bent. Right, because that would be too much weight to support. Mm -hmm. now, why is a trestle important to preserve? What's, what's so unusual about it? Well, this trestle is very rare because it's one of the few trestles still remaining, still standing. Most of them have been destroyed by fires or other natural causes. Right, being wood, it would burn very easily, one would think. Yes, of course. Um, this trestle's, trestle is also special because it's a curved trestle, oh. which is rare. Here's You have some pictures Actually, for yeah, us. a picture mm -hmm. of the trestle in its present state today. Let me see that. Oh, my. Okay. It's very overgrown. And here's a historic picture. Here's a historic picture of the trestle. Somewhere here. I have a diesel engine crossing it. Uh-huh. Wow, that looks very heavy. Yes. And it's still supporting it without even bending or anything. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? So Red Lion has one of the few that are yet remaining. It does. It sounds like a very complex project that would involve a lot of different groups of people. Why did you pick such a challenging project as far as your project? Well, I picked a pro this project, first of all, because I'm, I'm interested in local history and the local things around the area. And also, my family's, my family's land in York Township actually borders the trestle. Mm -hmm. So I live very close to it, and I've you know, seen, all, seen it and been at it many times. Also, I'm interested in engineering. I'd like to go into engineering as in my career. Mm -hmm. so this is. Well, this trestle is located where? It's actually 
um, between Redline and Dallas Town along Springwood Road mm -hmm. in Redline. It's very but difficult. But our viewers find it very easily? It's very actually difficult to find, especially, you know, in the winter when it's all snowing and everything. But um, Especially if it's overgrown, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, if it's overgrown, which it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's between Redline and Dallas Town and on the Mott and Pod line, of course. Mm -hmm. but, but that's the next thing I was going to ask you. What train system actually used this area? You know, when you go to Redline, you can see there is a Redline train station. And Red Lion used to produce a lot of cigars and furniture. It was a real hub of activity. So they needed a good train system. So what train actually passed through Red Lion and presumably on this trestle? Well, it was actually the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad Line, which mm -hmm. is known as the Ma and Pa Railroad Line. Mm -hmm. This line was organized in 1901 through the merger of two railroad companies, mm -hmm. the York and Lehigh Railroad Company and the Southern York Railroad Company. And and transported many materials throughout York County down to Baltimore, which mm -hmm. was the southern end of the railroad. Mm -hmm. It transported things such as cigars and cigar boxes, of course, from Red Lion, and right. also furniture and milk and, of course, coal, which was a necessity back then. Right, everybody heated their houses, yes. and th that was the main fuel that was available. Mm -hmm. It certainly worked better than wood. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what is involved in actually getting this project off the ground? You've decided this is what you want to do, now what? Well, I organized my project into four different steps. Mm -hmm. My first is to raise community awareness, raise publicity and awareness. Right, you got to have the community behind yes, you when you try to do something so major. Mm -hmm. The second is to get a survey of the land. And the third is to get an engineering assessment. And finally, the end of my project will be to report to the Monpog Greenway Commission about what I have found. Now, many of our viewers may not be familiar with what the Greenwood Green Greenway Commission. Yes, I do not even know what it is. What is it? <laughs> well, it's a commission that was recently formed of seven different municipalities in the area. Mm -hmm. It involves York Township, Red Lion, Dallas Town, Yo, Chansford Township, Windsor, and I can't remember what the seventh is. Um, well, it involves seven different municipalities. Right, and what is their function then? These municipalities would like to form a railroad, a biking path, a biking and walking path, a rail trail along this Mon Pa line. Oh, and the trestle is on, along the bike, biking trail? Our vision would like to be if the trestle could be a part of the trail. We'd like to see the trestle actually the trail running over the trestle. Oh, okay. But that would be... Just like Hanover Junction yes. at the rail trail. But if that's not possible, we'd at least like to still restore it and have it as a historic site for people to enjoy along the way. Wow, that's quite an endeavor. So what are you doing to raise public awareness? You're here tonight, so that's yes, a good step. Mm -hmm. So far, I've actually um, had a few things. I've had a presentation at the, or I had a stand at the Red Line Street Fair, mm -hmm. which I raised a lot of awareness from the Red you Line community. You brought that presentation okay, with I you. A, mm -hmm. I have a board here that I made there. Um, also, I've been giving some community, community presentations. I gave one at the York County Rail Trail Authority the other week. Mm -hmm. And I also made a website, which is www.taylortrestle.org. W-W-W, Taylor, spelled T-A-Y-L-O-R, Trestle. How do you spell Trestle? T-R-E-S-T-L-E. Trestle dot org. And that's where our viewers can find out how your project is advancing. Mm -hmm. And I might add, also contribute to it. And we'll find out more about that when we return. We're going to have to take a small break just as soon as we find our notes here. Now, Edward Burke once said, people will not look forward to posterity who never look back to their ancestors. We'll have to think about that. We're going to hear from Etzweiler Funeral Home, personalized funerals because it's all about you, as well as from our local lawyer pharmacy, who is your friendly pharmacist. We'll be right back. Welcome back to American Visions. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny with Joe Laux, and he is our Eagle Scout who is currently working on his project that is Taylor's Trestle in Red Lion. Now, when we left off, Joe, we were talking about how Taylor's Trestle is actually on a giant biking and hiking trail that is the project, as the projects are intertwining here, of the Mompaw Greenway Commission. Yeah, that is correct. Um, They'd like to make, of course, the Red Line Mile project, which has been going on now, which right. is actually sort of separate from this project, is going to be part of the Greenway. It's going to be more than that, though. It's going to be extended through all the seven municipalities, hopefully. And hopefully, we'd like to eventually see it connect to the rail trail in York County, the York Heritage Rail Trail. And Taylor's Trestle would be an integral part of that, something that people could see as they biked or hiked yeah, along it'd be, the it'd trail. it'd be an attraction or a very historical site. 
Mm -hmm. I said as part of your project, you're increasing public awareness. So you've been talking to people, you've been meeting them at the Red Lion Street Fair. What kind of comments have you heard from people as, as you discussed your project? Well, I think I've heard many comments from people, many stories. I think basically if you lived in Red Lion at that time, you had known of this dress or have played of it. Mm -hmm. Most people have. I mean, I think there's a very large level of support in the community. I've heard so many different memories from just the normal playing chicken with the train to or riding. Playing your, chicken, what does that mean? Well, just, you know, getting in the middle of the trestle and when the train comes trying to outrun it to the end. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully making it or running, riding your motorcycle across the trestle. I've heard of that in front of the train. When the train was coming, you would go to one side and oh my. drive across. And well, I guess it was a story with a happy ending if they could tell yeah, you about well, it. Yeah. <laughs> it was. And, you know, some people I've heard laid right under the tracks of the train passed so they would pass just inches above their faces. Oh my goodness. Wow. It's very interesting. But so are you interested in hearing more about those memories? I'd like to actually. Um, if anyone, if any of the viewers have any memories of the trestle, they can visit my website, which is again, taylortrestle.org. And there's a guest book section on my website where they can leave their memories. Mm -hmm. and I'd be glad to hear any more memories about them. Oh, what are you going to do with all those memories? Are you going to make them into a little book? Or? I could. I'd, you know, that'd be really a nice project to do. Yeah. Well, you're full of all good ideas. <laughs> yeah. So increasing public awareness was the first step in your project. Then you mentioned that you need to get a surveyor. What are you looking for in a surveyor? Well, really, we need to have a surveyor determine whose land it's on. As of now, we do not know which land the trestle is on. It's at an intersection of so many different lands. It could be Red Lion land, Dallas Town land, York Township land, Yo land. Oh, it's getting complicated. even private land. Wow. I mean, all these different lands intersect at that area. So we need a survey to determine whose land it's on mm -hmm. before we can progress. Uh, you haven't found a surveyor yet? We're actually looking for a surveyor. I've been in the process of looking for a surveyor who can hopefully donate their services or at least provide them at a mm -hmm. discount mm -hmm. since this is an Eagle Scout project and it has almost no budget to it. And it will benefit the community. Private, yeah, private donations, but yes, it will. Right. And you also mentioned that you need an engineer. What is the purpose of the engineer? Well, we'd like to get an engineering assessment done on the trestle to, de to basically determine the scope and feasibility of the project and also an estimate of the cost, how much the project will cost to restore this trestle. Mm -hmm. And finally, how might our viewers get involved? Uh, are you looking for volunteers at this point or you're not yet at that stage? As of now, I am not at that stage. But really, what they can do is just stay supportive of the, supportive of the project. Mm -hmm. They can talk to their community leaders and have them stay supportive of the project. And really, just support is the main thing I'm looking for right and now. And have you been talking to local politicians and community leaders? I have, leaders? yes. I've been communing, communicating with many of the local leaders. And, and do you get a sense that you have their support? It seems like such I a great so. project. Yes. A lot of people are really supportive of this project. They think it's a neat project and a good project. I think it's very worthwhile myself. Now, you're going to write this little report and present it to Mom Paul Greenway Commission. What right. would happen next if this was to move forward? Well, after that, that's actually the end of my project part, but after that, hopefully the Greenway can then take it and secure the right of way, secure the financing, and hopefully then engage a contractor and actually get the work done. Wouldn't it be hard for you to just step aside and not get any yeah. more involved with it? Well, I'd like to continue to stay involved with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very neat project and I've been so involved with it so far so so tell us more about your website and what we'll find there if we go there www.taylortrestle.org that's correct yes um, well I have a bunch of different things about the trestle on the website I have a history of the trestle a detailed history of the trestle along with a synopsis of my project which I've been talking about but I have a more detailed synopsis there I also have many photos of the trestle both present photos and historic photos of the trestle. Did you bring any of those to show us? I do. I have, well, I do have some present photos here. This is a photo of the, the side of the trestle. It's the structure of the trestle. Mm -hmm. You can see the different, all the wooden beams. You talked about vents. Point out the vents to us. The vents would be in here. The vertical. Yeah, the vertical things that go down from the track to the ground to keep it staying up. I also have. Here's a picture which I think is very neat. It shows that the trestle, it shows the bottom of the trestle. The trestle is not anchored into the ground anywhere. It just sits on it the ground. It just sits on the ground. The weight from the trestle supports it. So it's not anchored anywhere into the ground. Isn't it amazing that the wood has not totally rotted over all these years? Well, it is. Some of it actually has. There are some, I was down at the trestle, and there's actually this one beam that you can see through. Oh, my. <laughs> but most of them, a lot of them are actually very sound. 
mm -hmm. very secure. So you think that this project will be underway in a couple of years or looking at 10 years? What, well, we'd what like kind to see it in one or two years to be underway. I mean, that's a very vague time frame. It could very well take more than that, hopefully less than 10 years. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to see it done in the next few years. Have you always been interested in history or trains? Um, yeah, I, you know, I've been really interested in the trains and things like that and some of those local area history. And Tell us a little bit about your Boy Scouting efforts. Well, as far as the project. Or any, how did you get involved in Boy Scouts? What has it meant to you? Well, I got involved in Boy Scouts a number of years ago, and I'm, I'm currently working on this, you know, my Eagle Scout project. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy Boy Scouts. As I said, I'm in Troop 35 in Red Lion. Mm -hmm. I think it's a well, it says here that you're an assistant scoutmaster. Oh, yeah. It's um, one of the highest boy positions, actually. It's just I basically assist with the scoutmaster and what they do and assist with my troop. And tell us about some of the other badges that you're wearing. Well, I'm wearing this is um, a badge that shows that I'm in the Order of the Arrow, which is the Scouting's National Honor Society, really. It's a, and what did you have to do to achieve that? Service organization. You have to work and, you know, give some service and meditate on things and it's a, it's a neat organization to be in. But, and this patch down here um, is from National Youth Leadership Training, mm -hmm. which is actually a boy leadership course. Mm -hmm. It's held at the Boy Scout camp around here, Tuckahoe. And I took the course three years ago and it mm -hmm. teaches you how to be a leader in your troop. Mm -hmm. It's a course from all the different, all the different, the leaders from the different troops come together, the boy leaders. Mm -hmm. And they take this course. It's a one-week course about how to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And I took it two years ago, and for the last two years, I've returned to actually teach the course. Oh, that's exciting. So. Sounds like you've been a great contributor to yeah. Boy Scouts. Oh, yeah. It's a very busy. Event. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a small break. Remember, your shoes are really important. It gets you to where you're going, and yet one in four people wear the wrong size. If you put on weight, your foot is going to spread out and increase your shoe size. And as you get older, your foot is actually going to go longer and wider. We're going to hear from East York Optical setting your sights on a sharper focus. We'll be right back. Welcome back to American Visions. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny. But before we get back to our discussion about Taylor Tressel, Taylor's Tressel, I want to talk to you about a problem that many of you struggle with, and that would be high cholesterol. Actually, the American Heart Association recommends that if you have high cholesterol, heart disease, or other coronary risk factors, that you limit your dietary cholesterol to 200 milligrams a day. Now, even healthy individuals should limit their daily cholesterol to 300 milligrams a day. Now, remember, saturated fats raise your blood cholesterol more than dietary cholesterol. So shrimp lovers, rejoice. Shellfish have very little saturated fat. Omega-3s that make up some of the fat in shellfish is actually heart healthy. Now it's actually in the preparation of food with your frying or your dipping in butter that adds calories and cholesterol. So instead, try baking or broiling instead using lemon or herbs for seasoning. And as with anything, remember, shellfish need to be eaten in moderation. Shrimp has 165 milligrams of cholesterol in a three ounce serving. And other shellfish, including your clams, crab, mussels, oysters, scallops, and lobster, have only about 45 to 90 milligrams of cholesterol in a three ounce serving. An equivalent serving of chicken or beef contains no less. Well, there's always an exception to the rule. Squid and octopus have more than your limited 200 milligrams of cholesterol a day. And crayfish, about 115. Remember, life isn't merely about being alive, it's living well. And now back to our discussion on Taylor's Trestle with Joe Laux. Joe, Taylor's Trestle got its name from where? Well, it was actually named, we believe, we're not sure, um, for the farmer that owned the land around the Trestle when they built it. Farmer Taylor? Yeah, Farmer Taylor. Uh, it also is known as Trestle 689. Where did that name come from? Well, um, it's Taylor's Trestle 689 because it is 68.9 miles north of the Mon Paz Southern Station in Baltimore. Hmm. So that's how they got the number. They just took the miles. Now you told us a little bit about this Mon Paz Railroad that used to run. It actually started, or at least Taylor's Trestle, we think, was constructed, what, in 1895? 1895, yes. And then when did it actually stop being used? Well, it was used for passenger service until in the 50s. And this wooden trestle in its present state was used until the 1950s? And it was actually used later than that in the late 1900s and the 1970s and 80s 
That for, is amazing. For freight. It was, you know, used for freight until up until that time. And after that, they abandoned it and... Well, why would they give up on it after all these years? They don't need it anymore because, really, modern transportation in our roads and our highways have become so easy to transport things that they don't need trains anymore. Oh, that's when we had highways, super highways, cars, buses, and trucks, huh? Yep. Well, the Red Lion Station has been in existence a long time. Have you been inside it? I have, actually, yeah. It's a... And what would you find inside the Red Lion Station? Well, the Red Lion Station right now, actually, is a little train museum. They have a few trains running there. And is the train museum aware of your project? Um, I believe so, yes. I have been contacting many different organizations around the area. And is that inspirational for you? I'm surprised that you take such a great interest in Red Lion history. You could be out playing softball yeah. and doing all these other things, and here you have tackled this tremendous project. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's inspirational for me. I enjoy doing it, and it's a great experience. Mm -hmm. And it's really a service to your community. Yes. Which is actually what scouting is all about. That's, that's correct. And how many years have you been involved in scouting? Mm, I think four or five now. Well, you must be a very busy person. How much of your time does this take? Um, well, I do a lot of activities with scouting. I'll go on, we'll go on scouting trips, you know, maybe once, once a month or so. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than that, maybe less. Um, you go to different trips and places around the area and camp out and some things. And, of course, as I said, I'm involved in the National Youth Leadership Training Program, which it meets once a month for a few months and then has a program in the summer. So, Oh, my goodness. Tell us about one of those summer programs. Well, as I said, it's a leadership course for boys, and what we do is we take boys from different troops and gather them together and teach them leadership skills, such as how to communicate well and how to get your ideas, organize your ideas, and organize your visions and goals and things. Mm -hmm. And on top of all of that, you still go to school. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how many hours a week have you been devoting to this project? Um, well, at the present time, I've been probably a few hours a week for this, trying to, you know, each week I try to do something and try to contact someone to work on someone. I've been, I've been contacting people throughout the project, really, and I've been continuing to do that. The website is www.taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, Trestle, spell Trestle. T-R-E-S-T-L-E. T-R-E-S-T-L-E dot org. org. And there you can share your memories. You can find out all about the old Trestle, as well as what stage in development the project is progressing. Mm -hmm. And you would like to hear from people about their memories. I would love to hear any more memories. Mm -hmm. And you are Joe Laux, L-A-U-C-K-S. That is correct. Is there anything else that our viewers should know as far as how they can participate? Well, as I said, really just stay aware and things. And I have a few more pictures I'd like to show. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is actually a picture of the trestle in its present state. Mm -hmm. it's, right, it is overgrown. it's very overgrown. And you can see four steel I-beams here that were added in 1914 to give the structure more support. And it really had to function into the 70s and early 80s. That's correct. And this is a historic picture. It's actually of Steam Engine 41 crossing the trestle. Oh, that's exciting. Yes, it's a very, very neat picture. It's so. just amazing that a structure that that is, isn't even anchored onto the ground, just sits on the ground, yep. largely constructed of wood, is able to support a locomotive of that that's weight. Correct. I'm absolutely amazed. <laughs> well, I admire your inclination to even tackle this project. We wish you well on it. I hope you'll come back and update us on it in the future. This has been a glimpse into another great American life. Remember, our country's strength is woven by the diversity and contributions of its citizens. No matter what age, you still can contribute to your community. It's these ideals and contributions that make our country strong and make us proud to be American. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you again next week. Good night for now. Good night, Joe. Good Thank night. you.